About five years ago, I, I lived downtown in a major city in the U.S. I I've always been a night person. I would often find myself bored after a roommate who decisively was not a night person went to bed. The past time, I used to go for long walks and spend my time thinking about you know happenings in my life and other events that may be you know just going on. I spent four years like that, walking alone at night, and never once had I had a reason to feel afraid. I, I always used to joke with my roommate even that uh, drug dealers in the city were even polite, because at least they offered you a courtesy, you know, use. If, yeah, whatever though. But all that changed in just a few minutes in one evening. It was a Wednesday, somewhere between 1 and 2 in the morning, and I was walking near a police patrolled park, quite a ways from my apartment to be exact. It was quite a night. Even for a weeknight, very little traffic, and almost no one was on foot. The park, as it was most nights, was completely empty. I turned down the short side of the street in order to loop around back to my apartment. That's when I first noticed him. At the far end of the street, on my side, there was a silhouette of a man dancing. It was a strange dance, similar to a wasp, but he finished each box with an odd forward stride. I guess you could say he was dance walking, and he headed straight for me. Deciding that he was probably drunk, as most um, bars usually kicked out all the remaining customers by 2 to 3 in the morning, I figured that, well, you know, it's probably a little bit loopy right now. So I stepped as close to the road and gave him the majority of the sidewalk to pass by me. The closer he got, the more I realized how gracefully he was moving. He was very tall and lengthy, uh, and wearing an old suit. He danced closer still until I could make out his face. His eyes were wide and wild, and his head tilted back slightly, looking off at the sky. His mouth formed a painfully wide cartoon smile. Between the eyes and the smile, I decided to cross the street before he danced any closer because he, he flat out made me feel uncomfortable. I took my eyes off of him to cross the street. As I reached the other side, I glanced back and I stopped dead in my tracks. He, he stopped dancing and was standing a f with one foot in the street perfectly parallel to me. He, he, he was facing me, but still looking skyward. The smile still wide on his lips. I, I was completely and utterly unnerved by this. I started walking again, but I kept my eyes on the man. He, he, he didn't move. Once I put about half a block between us, I turned away from him for a moment to watch the sidewalk in front of me. The street and the sidewalk ahead of me was completely en empty. Still unnerved, I looked back where he was, where he had been standing, to find him gone. For the briefest of moments, I felt relieved, until I noticed that he had crossed the street and was only slightly crouched down. I, I couldn't tell for sure due to the distance, but the shadows, but I was certain he was facing me. I, I had looked away from him for more, no more than 10 seconds, and it was so clear that he moved fast. I was so shocked that I stood there for some time, staring at him. They started moving towards me again. He took a giant, exaggerated, tiptoed step as if he was a cartoon character sneaking up on someone, except he was moving very, very quickly. I, I, I like to say at this point I ran away or pulled pepper spray or my cell phone or something like that or anything at all, but I didn't. I stood there completely frozen as the smiling man crept towards me. And then he stopped again, about a car length from me, still smiling his smile. I still look, still looking to the sky. When I finally found my voice, I blurted out the first thing that came to mind. What I meant to ask was, "What do you want?" In a angry, commanding tone. But what came out was a whisper of, "What?" what? Regardless of whether human or not, I could. Regardless of whether humans could or could not smell fear, they can certainly hear it. I heard it in my own voice, and I, 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 that made me only more afraid. But he didn't react to it at all. He just, he just stood there smiling. And then, after what felt like forever, he turned around very slowly and started to dance walk away. 
just like that. Not wanting to turn my back to him again, I just watched him go until he's far enough away to be almost out of sight. And then I realized something. He wasn't moving away anymore, nor was he dancing. I, I, I watched in horror as the distant shape grew larger and larger. He was coming back my way. This time he was running. I, I ran as well. I ran until I was off to the side of the road and back on my... And back onto the better lit road with sparse traffic. Looking back at him behind me, he was nowhere to be found. The rest of the way home, I kept glancing back over my shoulder, expecting to see his stupid smile, but he was never there. I lived on that. I lived in that city for six months after that night, and I never went out for another walk. There was something about his face that always haunted me. He didn't look drunk. He didn't look high. He looked completely and utterly insane. 